Okay, JHK here for the South China Morning Post, SCMP MMA. And join me right now is PFL lightweight Brittany Elkin. Brittany, thank you so much for the time. You're in the bubble. Are you enjoying yeah. it? Actually, I'm having a great time. I'm surprised that it's kind of kind of neat and relaxing. I didn't have to do the long bubble, though. Yeah, only 12 days. Um, They shortened mine down to five. Oh, that's something new. That's good to hear. Yeah, it was a, it was a treat, so I got a full camp. All right, for sure, for sure. Now, um, let's start way back. You know, 2019, you had your last MMA fight. Could you take me back to that year and, and how you ended up walking away from MMA competition? Sure. Um, I had just fought Kayla before that, and the PFL had notified me to um, maybe do a tune-up fight because they were doing the tournament. So I took a local promotion fight versus Bobby Joe Dazzle, who you saw in the tournament. Um, and my arm got broken that fight in the first, uh, probably the first 30, 30 seconds. Uh, she did a kick and it, it shattered my arm in three places. And um, I fought for four minutes in that bout um, with a severely broken arm. And um, the extensive recovery on that was about eight months. So while I was recovering, I just decided to maybe leave the sport um my record wasn't so great and i just decided to gear towards um other passions like grappling and jujitsu and i i came back in i believe i took another about like it took about eight months recovery from that and then i started competing in 2020 after after the pandemic even so yeah you were and then, really busy in 2020 yeah. with the grappling and uh yeah you're you're grappling for fight to win you had so many matches were you still training the other aspects of mma throughout that time i was often in in the spars and stuff for other women that were you know i would always say like i'm not benefiting me i'm just helping you and stuff like that um i would do like things favors for friends um i was always in like the no geek classes geared towards like wrestling takedowns and things but like majority no i shifted to majority just like grappling wrestling and things that were i was interested in unless a friend or somebody was doing something that i put as special effort into sparring but no i kind of separated sparring anyway for that yeah a, a few months back i talked to um ah, i forgot his name he's transitioning into uh into mma from grappling pure grappling and he and i asked him like would you take a grappling fight and he said, oh, Buchecha. I was talking to Buchecha. And, and I oh, said, I love yeah, 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 great. He's going to, you know, he's making his transition to MMA now. You know what I mean? And he's he told me, I asked him, you know, because Gordon Ryan signed a one championship. And I said, hey, would right. you take a grappling fight with Gordon Ryan in one championship? And he said, probably not because the training for MMA compared to just pure grappling is so different. And for, for a layman, they would think like, hey, you just do some striking and then you know you should be ready to go right so how different was it for you to you know get back into mma training well you know we we took a game plan since we had only like nine weeks to pull this like together we took a game plan like what does britney do well and and tried to like I've, I've been through many years of experience with mma so i definitely had some rust to work off real quick um but just making adjustments things to like really um pull out things that i did well and add them into um MMA techniques to try to get to positions that I'm, I'm comfortable and good at. Um, really, I just, I just bit down and just went back into class. I did, I didn't, you know, not everything is perfect and not everything comes back clean, but I, I feel very, very well prepared. And I, I came back rather fast. You know, I didn't really take that far a time off for as long as I was in. Um, and I feel ready to go. I feel very well prepared. Yeah, for sure. And of course, you were in that in that grappling world. And, and it's not like you were sitting on the couch, hanging out yeah. and, and Netflixing 2020. It definitely it definitely like was easier to come back into because my cardio and shape was already there. I wasn't um, that far away from weight and considering where I've been like in the past, um, taking a fight like this or something. You know, I was I was 170 when they called me 171, something like that. So it wasn't like a huge like get back in shape thing. It was just leaning out and um yeah, I had to make a bunch of adjustments in the way I trained for sure. I mean, I'm not going to try to tell you that I gracefully came back like a ballerina, but uh, yeah, uh, it was it came back. I mean, I'm going to do good in there. The the news is that you're facing Clarissa Shields. You know, there's a lot of attention on her because of her status in the boxing world, and this fight coming together is interesting because we like we said earlier, you were away from the sport. And now you're yeah. coming back. So it must have been that allure, right? The allure of her making her debut at the same time. 
it was, the fight is what brought me back. I mean, if they would have just offered me just like, Hey, you want to do another fight? I would have said no, <laughs> but this was like a, it was like stylistically just a cool matchup. I mean, you get so many opportunities in your life to do cool things. And I've just felt like the stars really aligned um, for this. And I, and I, I saw an opportunity that I have a chance to really do something here. You know, I could, I have a chance to win. Um, and yeah, I couldn't find a reason to say no. Like I, I make mental lists. I make other I like acknowledgements of like, oh, is this good for me or bad? Everything was like, this is, oh God, I can't find anything. This is all good. You know, my kid's in a good place. I'm in a good place. My weight's in a good place. I'm healthy. I'm, you know, the list was just all favorable. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to take this. I'm going to come out and do this. I, I, and then how cool that I did. I'm so, so glad. I'm so, I think the, I've said this in every fight. The coolest thing about be, this fight is being in it, you know, cause it's been a, it's been a total experience and it's just cool. Yeah, of course. You know, riding the roller coaster like most fighters do, right? Um, yeah. Have you seen the footage on Shield? You know what I mean? There's little bits and pieces online. What is your critique on what you've seen? I, I see a lot of things that she's put up. I don't think that's like everything that she has. You know, the things I've seen, I've seen many holes and lots of entries that I can I can make adjustments to make myself benefits um but i think that fighters can be liars and want you to see only what they want to see so i i'm not expecting that's all she has you know um on the mma training that you're you're referring to in her hands i'm obviously very aware of the distance i need to create or take away from her um but yeah i i feel like i'm i feel very confident in everything i've seen that i can still make moves the bold moves and winning moves so um so i'm facing it some people might look at this and say, oh, it's a striker versus a grappler. But in reality, is it more of a boxer versus a mixed martial artist in your eyes? That's how I, I kind of just got a little fury downstairs when they were interviewing me because um, they they compared me on that to Jake Paul and Ben Askren. And I said, well, I'm not going in there like Ben Askren or anything like that. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I'm an MMA fighter in this fight. I'm not just a jujitsu people, but... When people say that stuff, I let them just say it because why give her any sense of comfort that she like needs to have, like, I want her to think I'm just, just a little jujitsu girl doing sport jujitsu over here, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I hope I'm overlooked for her mentality to just make it a little bit of a better fight for me, you know? Now, if you dig a little deeper, what do you see in this matchup beyond that? You mean like? The, if the result is wonderful and I win, is that what you're referring to? Well, besides to? that, you know, like stylistically, like where do you feel like you've improved throughout the last year? You know, we know your grappling is phenomenal, but it's just other aspects too. You know, are you stronger? You know, the grips is important, right, in this fight? Mm -hmm. I, I feel I've made so many improvements. Like I, I, I had the screw, but I didn't have the bolt to tighten the game. You know what I mean? Like the two pieces of metal were jiggly and now they're, um, I don't know. I feel like I've just, a couple of things will make you such a better fighter, a little sharpening. And um, my coaches were able to find things that I did well. And they were like, let's bring this out. You know, um, I'm, I got to bring my coach Zach in the corner. He did that for me a lot. He critiqued a lot of just tiny little things that made big, big, big changes. And I was like, oh. so, um, yeah, I feel like I've really grown a lot. And um, I, I hope to thread that all together and make a wonderful fight um, and be that notable strike or striker versus grappler fight you know that's i'm daydreaming about um i grew an incredible amount i i feel from the injury that i left mma from to this point um has been in you'll see you know out, fighters always say this you'll see it different britney um no you'll i hope to you see Brit. now closing the distance you know i mean you mentioned zach your coach zach, zach bukowski uh, if i'm mm -hmm. correct right and he's good mm -hmm. at closing the distance himself man yeah. with his wrestling and everything do you feel like you could be chasing her around in this fight could that be a possibility um, no uh i'm not just gonna go and dive into things like that you know i'm gonna set up my game i'm gonna use some some tactics with you know knowledge of the where i want to be in distance control do i see an opening to close the distance i'm gonna take it um Am I aware that I need to be inside or outside of her range? Yes. You know, things like that. That's more what I mean than just diving at every, you know, leg she gives me in the front. You know what I mean? So, um, 
Yeah, I don't want to, I don't, I definitely don't want to chase her because that could lead into some power hands. And I just, you know, I want to work her, not chase her. So um, I think I'm just going to keep on looking for a different hole or a different, different place to make her step wrong. Another aspect is the cage versus the ring. She's used to that ring. You're used to the cage. Everybody says it's a different game. It's a whole nother element added to it. You know, where, what do you see in, in, in fighting in the cage? Well, the cage is a weapon for sure. Um, I mean, you can get hurt just leaning on it. It sucks. Um, there's a lot of things that she does. She back in a lot of her videos I've watched, she like backs into the corner of the ring and feels safe there. I don't think that's a safe place for her with me in a cage, you know? So I think it adds a lot of element. It also has this mental element, you know, when you close the cage doors, it's a finality. Um, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, we're in this fucking octagon together. Let's fight. So I think it does bring a huge, huge game changing role in the ropes of safety in the corner of boxing. You know, I hope she just backs straight up. You know what I mean? Like, I, I hope that she looks for a corner to go hide in. There's something that I've seen her do in videos. So, um, I am going to say yes, the cage adds a huge element that um, I don't think things can be, what's the right word, simulated in sparring, what the cage can bring out, you know? Um, so, I mean, you can be fighting in a cage and sparring and still never simulate the destruction that can happen from it. So, yeah, I, I think that's going to help me. I think that's a tool I'm going to try to use in my game. Yeah, when I was thinking about the matchup and the reason why I asked you about the cage, because the other weekend I was at a local show and, and there was two guys fighting for the local title. And one of the guys, he was backing up. He's a counter striker. He likes to use his hands and he got his foot stuck in the cage. And then mm -hmm. another time in the same fight, he, his foot went into the cage and cut his foot. So yeah. I was thinking, man, that's not good for somebody that doesn't have that, that familiarity of that cage, the right? Weird, the, the cage awareness. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it, it's a I huge factor. I, I've seen her do that a lot. She goes in there and then she looks for power hands being backed up, you know, and when somebody's trying to come in. And so <clears throat> if she does that, I have a plan for that. I hope to keep her near it. You know, I want to work, use the cage as my weapon. Um, you know, hopefully that I have the more experience on that. I'm looking for that. I have the upper hand on that. I, believe. I mean, how can I not have that many fights over it? The cage has been used against me. So I'm going to take what I've learned and try to hurt her. Right Definitely. There. Now, everybody's thinking that you're going to give her this rude awakening. How do you see the rude awakening her, of her, her? Actually, not rude awakening, rude welcoming to the MMA yeah. world. Right. I, I want to be that. I want to be, you know, the rude welcoming I like better than the rude awakening. I think that she is um, a little behind on that mentality of how bad it is when it's going bad and it's hard to figure out things inside the inside the ring, you know, when it's happening. So uh, I I kind of got lost on the question and my thoughts because um I just went to somewhere else on that. But I think that that yeah, I I want to give her a rude awakening, um, or a rude whatever word we just said, but I think she's she has that boxer culture mentality where she just keeps on saying, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best. And I see that in a lot of events when boxers do that. And, you know, um, I'm just kind of letting her do that <laughs> so that she can talk about the rude awakening in her interview after or something like that. You know, I don't want to give her any awareness that she should be worried. You know, I want her to go in there confident like that and let me break it down and her have to figure it out in there, you know. For sure. Now, I know you don't want to think too far to the future, but after you get a win against Shields, could we possibly see you stepping in to this season? Um, they've not talked to me about that at all. Um, I don't know if you can just step in to a season. Um, and if everything goes right, I guess I'll I'll make those decisions. You know, um, I'm really not. I've definitely thought about it. And um, I'm just going to make wise decisions and we'll see. Uh, I'm not, I've, I've had a ton of fun in MMA and I very much enjoyed it this time. I'm not like sour puss mad at it. So I don't, won't leave unless it's, unless it's time to leave, you know? All right. June 10th, you make it.
your return to the cage. Thank you so much, Brittany, for the time and uh, good luck to you. And hopefully, I hope uh, we see you in this season. You know what I mean? Get another shot at it. Let's go. Thank you for the interview. Pick a move in the ring. You can hit me with the words you fling.